This leaks is the one. When I think about the queens of reality TV, very few come to mind. Names like New York Tiffany Pollard being one, Tammy Roman, and then the infamous Nene Leakes. They reign supreme for having huge personalities and memorable moments that will forever live on in meme and reality TV history. When Real Housewives of Atlanta first aired, we seen a first-hand account of the lives of five affluent women in Atlanta. And it didn't take long for Nene Leakes to become the breakout star because she gave everything a great reality star is supposed to give. Dramatic, unforgettable moments, me, check. Charisma, World. check. And a good shady read and hilarious catchphrases. She was reality TV gold and an instant fan favorite. And because of this, her popularity grew overnight. Nini's star power is undeniable. Her antics made her a scene stiller and rightfully so. Her impact on housewives is something that can't be duplicated. Well, first of all, I'm a diva. She put RHOA on the map. When it comes to reality shows, especially Housewives, there's genuine friendships and then there's alliances. Between Nene, Kim, and Sheree, those were the girls that really made Real Housewives of Atlanta what it is. Between the hilarious chemistry between Kim and Nene and Nene and Sheree's beef, these are the storylines that carried the show. Kim and Nene's friendship started off genuine but it quickly turned into a love-hate friendship that lasted for seasons because Nene mocked Kim's singing career or lack thereof. Ooh, I ain't pretending to be with Dallas Austin. You know that song. <laughs> I'm pretending to be with me. Now, anybody who's not tone deaf can hear that Kim sounds like a dying cat and Nene called it out, causing a forever lasting feud. This feud birthed the first RHOA alliance between Kim and Sheree a convenient friendship that consisted of their dislike for Nene. The season one reunion really showed that Nene was a formidable player in the reality TV game. She mentioned in an interview that she was the one who started the whole concept of reunions. And one day she went to Andy saying that she wanted to confront Kim. And not only did she confront her, she solidified her spot. And we got one of Nene's most quotable moments. Close your legs to married men. Wow, Nene. Is he legally married? It. You are you absolutely you right. From that moment on, Nene's fate was sealed as one of the most iconic characters on Bravo. Nene was not only charismatic and funny, she was also relatable. And from the beginning, we learned a lot about her life, past, her marriage, and children. She put everything out on the table. Her family life was tough because she grew up without both her mother and father, and we seen her go on the journey of trying to find out who her real father was on the show. It wasn't all about glitz and glam and being a socialite in Atlanta, even though Nene was a part of that world. She also showed that she was real with the real world problems, and in the beginning, she was very likable. She was kind of like that fun auntie that will drop a few gems when you need advice and then read you for Phil. What was the charm of Nene Leakes? The deeper she got into the reality TV game, the more she changed. Nene's huge personality carried her from unknown housewife to Queen Bee status of a hit TV show on Bravo. And by season three, it was clear Nene wasn't going anywhere. She was just getting started. On one hand, Nene's professional life was soaring, but her personal life was another story. Nene's marriage problems were playing out for the entire world to see. And to make matters worse, she was having problems with her older son, Bryce. The pressures of Nene's family drama started to become overwhelming. So she decided to go on her own quest to happiness, which happened to be plastic surgery. They just did was enhance your beauty, okay? Hey, Sheree, how are you? Nene fell into the infamous trap of the nip tuck, and people had many opinions on her drastic transformation. Her look changed from season to season, and as fast as Nene's physical appearance changed, an attitude adjustment followed. Tensions with certain castmates were at an all-time high, especially her frenemy Kim. Kim is another character people love to hate, and it was low-key satisfying seeing her get read by Nene, especially when she checked Kim for talking to her assistant crazy. I swear, every time I heard Kim yelling out, She's calling you, I have to go attend. I got annoyed. That was the start of my disdain for Kim Zolciak. 
But of course, that's another video. Him and Nini's history goes deep, and I don't think anyone will ever understand their odd relationship. And as much as people love to see them get along, they love to see them fight too, and they fought a lot. But as Nini's friendships fell apart, new friendships were made when Cynthia Bailey and Phaedra Park signed on to the cast. And Marlo was also introduced as the friend of the show. The era of the talls versus the smalls. Alliances were always important to Nini because you were either on her team or on the wrong team. Nini's pick a side attitude didn't help her relationships with the other women and attributed to her downfall. But as the saying goes, pride comes before the fall. But before she fell, watching the reign of Nini Leaks was amazing to watch. Nini was everywhere, starting with Celebrity Apprentice. She let everyone know, including her castmates, that she was a very rich bitch. New Money Nini was here, and as her money multiplied, so did the size of her head. Nini's new attitude caused a lot of division in the group because she was the self-proclaimed HBIC, and she wasn't wrong. Nini was dominating reality TV, and she also had her first TV debut on Glee and The New Normal. She was made for it. Completely changing the game, she took advantage of her reality TV name, getting bigger and better opportunities from it. She was the blueprint of what can happen if you actually use your reality TV platform the right way. This was Nini's rich bitch era, but it was also a major turning point in how she was perceived. In a span of a few years, Nini went from being the face of Real Housewives of Atlanta to the small screen on hit shows. And as a fan, I was really rooting for her. We watched Nini's career thrive. We watched her take Hollywood. And in her personal life, we watched her divorce and then remarry Greg. Everything was going great except for her friendships with the other ladies on the show. And by the end of season six, her friendships were anything but friendly. And it was basically Nini versus everybody, including her bestie, Cynthia. Her main nemesis around this time was Kenya Moore. I, Kenya is not who I want to be sitting up here talking about. She is not a good person. But would you say as a viewer, mm -hmm. at least give her a little respect I that she's a good villain? Kenya Moore is iconic in her own right, and you either love her or hate her. Kenya Moore came in with a bang her first season. She was beauty and brains with a whole lot of shade. And Nini felt threatened because from her perspective, Kenya was coming for her crown. And if you come for the queen, off with your head. But Nini finally met her match because Kenya went toe to toe with her in a way the other ladies didn't. There was always an underlying power dynamic between Kenya and Nini because Nini wasn't willing to give up her spot as HBIC and Kenya refused to bow down to her. Nini's pick aside energy and hate for Kenya had her falling out with the main girls who had her back, specifically Marlo Hampton. Things went left when Marlo decided to film and be friendly with Kenya, and Nini basically told Marlo, if you film with her, you're not filming with me. Showing Marlo in petty Nini fashion, anyone who befriended Kenya more wouldn't be a friend to her. Marlo, of course, didn't take this well, and their confrontation ended with Marlo chasing after Nini and reading her for filth about her Donald Trump hair and insecurities about Kenya. Uh-uh. Tell the whole Atlanta yeah. why you're not talking to me. Because I'm Kenya's friend. Marlo, I'm talking to Kenya. Don't nobody Marlo, tell me. Marlo's delivery might have been dead wrong, but she told no lies about Nini being insecure about Kenya taking her spot. It was enough room for both of them on the show, and they both brought something totally different. In the first few seasons of RHOA, we got the fun, bubbly, charismatic Nini. She was the nucleus of the show and the reason that people watched. But in later seasons, something changed and she became the villain of the show because of her awful superiority complex and bad behavior towards her castmates. In the words of Candy, I do not hate you. I do hate your superior complex. The Nini we came to know and love wasn't there anymore. And it honestly felt like Nini wasn't enjoying her time being a housewife anymore. The one mistake that I think Nini made was losing Cynthia as a friend. And once their friendship ended, things really started going downhill for her. Cynthia was the one person Nini always had in her corner, right, wrong, or indifferent. I hated seeing Nini lose the one person that actually liked her on the show. And I always thought that they would come back and mend their friendship. But unfortunately, it was never the same. Nini crossed the line with Cynthia by calling her husband a bitch. 
Even though Peter was messy as hell, but it became a lose-lose situation. Once friends beef with spouses, things become messy, and Cynthia was put in an impossible position. When Nene was confronted by Cynthia about calling Peter a bitch, Nene gave her best nonchalant act that she does anytime she does something wrong, having no empathy for someone who was once her friend. And it became crystal clear that the respect that Cynthia had for Nene wasn't reciprocated. Season 7 was by far one of Nene's hardest seasons. She landed a role in Cinderella playing the wicked stepmother, a character that was ironically becoming true to life. Art imitates life and the way things were playing out on the show, Nene was far from fan favorite and she wasn't a favorite with her castmates either. It always seemed like when one thing was going good in Nene's life, another thing was going horrible. And in an effort to bring the ladies together and repair relationships, Nene set up a therapy session with celebrity therapist Dr. Jeff. But things didn't go as planned. And it turned into an intervention for her instead. Can we, Three can we slow down? No, don't baby. come in. This ain't no come in, Nene Day. You're trying to be important this in this about situation. You, and you're not important, let's not, honey. Let's not, let's not mix apples and oranges. All of the women basically told her that she was the problem. Instead of trying to take the high road and make peace with the other ladies, Nene felt ganged up on and stormed out. Nene became difficult to be around because of her mean girl attitude. It even affected her other jobs, and it didn't take long for rumors to spread about her being difficult to work with. Nene's lack of awareness and untouchable attitude stopped her from seeing maybe she was the problem. And when anyone tried to call her out, she would lash out or become nonchalant, which ultimately solved nothing. Nene was constantly getting in her own way. Putting Nene in her place was something that rarely happened, but it was one new castmate on the show that wasn't here for her shenanigans. Spell bridesmaids. The hey, ass is not it. silent, honey. Let's go back to talk about you being a stripper. Me? I was a stripper and I liked it. What club was that at? <laughs> that was 20 years ago. Let's talk about something being well, uh, I'm in my 40s. That's I it? got you in your 40s. I am. You're like 20 years no, apart. No, we are not 20 years yes. apart, girl. Yeah. <laughs> when you were my age, you had edges. I gotta be honest, Claudia is reading Nene like hooked on phonics. Okay, girl, bye. Bye. Because I know you need to have an argument with the queen. You started with me. I didn't start an argument with you. I didn't start with you. You. Claudia Jordan's run on the show was short-lived, but very memorable because she did something the rest of the girls rarely ever did. This was the first time we seen Nene get a taste of her own medicine. And the read Claudia gave her will live in my head rent-free forever. She shut Nene down without breaking a sweat, and Nene just had to hold that L. You could tell some of the ladies enjoyed watching her get knocked down a few pegs because Nene thought she was better than everyone else, and Claudia came through and shut her down with one of the most iconic reads in RHOA history. Nene was losing friends fast because of her attitude, so she basically became the third member of Frickin' Frack for a short time because she didn't have anyone else to team up with. This season, the number of Nini's supporters on the show has shifted, and it's basically come down to these two ladies who are sitting right here with me. Here's it was another convenient alliance, and everyone could see through the unlikely friend group. And it made Nini even more unlikable, in my opinion. By the end of season seven, everyone besides Frick and Frack were sick of Nini. Hell, I think even Nini was sick of Nini. And during the reunion, she was very icy and nonchalant towards her other castmates. And no one could get through to her until Dr. Jeff came out, causing her to finally stop the tough act and have a breakthrough. Whether you want to admit to that or not. <laughs> Nene, don't run away. Everyone finally saw the vulnerable side of Nene, while also getting insight into why she acted the way she did. And the other ladies put their differences aside to console her. Season 8, Nene was casted as a friend of the show, and the vibe was different without her, but it was still an entertaining season. Nene was replaced by Kim Fields, which was an interesting choice to say the least. Kim was like a fish out of water, and it's safe to say her time on the show didn't last long. I like Nene better as a friend of the show because she was in a better place, and the bad blood she shared with the ladies became a thing of the past. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No. She's back. Yeah. When season nine of RHOA rolled around, everyone was shocked to see Nene was nowhere to be found. 
It was rumored that maybe she was fired, but that turned out not to be true. Her and Bravo were in negotiation and they just never came to a deal. But she couldn't stay away for long and when season 10 of the show aired, she was back as a regular on the show with two other OGs, Kim and Sheree. This was the first time we got to see the three main OGs back together in a long time. And instead of mending friendships, it was all drama. Kim is the only person I know that has had cancer, thyroids, blood clots. Jesus. I mean, damn, it's a wonder you're still walking. Like I've let Nene talk so much about me throughout the years. And this time it's like, you know what, bitch? Like I don't, I don't take that lightly. Maybe you should worry about the bugs in your house. She lives in a roach nest. Here's a video. Kim and Nene were off again in their love-hate relationship. And Kim did a lot of petty things towards Nene, which resulted in her getting read her rights at the reunion. Is you handicapped all the diseases you don't have? Handicapped? Where is your scooter? Because you should in a handicapped spot. <laughs> really? You done had everything to happen. Yeah. Where is your scooter? Where is your scooter? Where is it? The whole cast dug into Kim that reunion, which she deserved. Wig was very messy season 10. Fix your double chin next time you go to the plastic surgeon. <laughs> Nene also dealt with a few scandals when she went on tour with Escape as a comedy act. Nene said some pretty problematic things when the heckler in the audience had words for her. Her short-lived comedy career also stirred up beef with a few comedians. The drama was plentiful, but little did she know her worst seasons were yet to come. We once again saw Nene in a vulnerable position when she got the devastating news that her husband had cancer. And we watched her go through that while still trying to balance everything else. Everything that Nene was going through in her home life also reflected in some of her relationships with the ladies on the show. It was a hard season for Nene in her defense because she was going through a lot. But instead of being open with her friends and letting them support her, the walls went back up and she became her indifferent self, starting unnecessary drama along the way. Everything came to a boiling point when Nene hosted her bi wig party. You would think a party to embrace your real beauty would start off on a positive note, but not with the women of RHOA. Everything went left when Marlo showed up late and her and Nene started arguing about the friendship and how Nene felt unsupported. This opened up the door for Nene to be vulnerable and talk about everything she was going through with Greg being sick. The ladies rallied around her and tried to comfort her, but clearly it wasn't enough because just when we thought everything was cool, Nene proceeded to have a breakdown because some of the women walked into her closet. She ended up physically and verbally assaulting the camera crew and castmates, leaving everyone shocked. Nene's season 11 reunion was her worst because like always, she was just so unreceptive to anything the other ladies were trying to say to her. And she acted very passive aggressive. I don't have an issue with you. Trust me, don't try to form one because there is not one. You mm -hmm. have this thing where when you're not checking for someone, you don't even just say, hey, you no, know what? I'm feeling some kind of now. way. You just go straight in and disconnect That's and cut them off. Yeah, her ain't even friends. What is she talking about? She felt betrayed by ladies that she once called her friends. And she never owned up to anything that she did at all. But if anything was done to her, she played the victim. And it was basically, once again, Nene versus everyone. Nene brought a dark cloud to that reunion and it was hard to watch because you could tell that she was over it and just shut down. Nene wasn't the person that people loved to hate anymore. At this point, she was just downright unlikable. By season 12, Nene's relationship with Bravo was shot because of her behavior in front and behind the scenes. Despite Nene not being in a great place with most of the ladies on the show, she went on a surprising apology tour to try to salvage whatever friendship she had left which wasn't a lot. By this point, Nene knew her time was winding down on the show, so she was doing anything she could to get her spot back. The only difference is this time, the show wasn't centered around her anymore, and she realized that she was replaceable. The dynamics of the show changed, and in the words of Shawnee O'Neal, Thank you for your services. Thank you. By this point, it was no secret the other ladies were sick of her, and no amount of apologizing and ass-kissing would get her back in their good graces. She ended her last season not on a good note, but definitely with a bang, and the door and laptop was closed. Nene's bad attitude and ego sealed her fate, and season 12 was her last season on the show, not by her choice. 
Even though Bravo let her go, Nene wasn't going down without a fight, so she sued them for allegedly having a hostile and racist work environment. Don't doubt that Bravo most likely tolerated racism because I've seen many housewives say questionable and problematic things, but this just seemed like selective outrage and a desperate attempt for revenge. Nene thought that Bravo would never let her go, but she was sadly mistaken. She alleged that Bravo, NBC, and Andy were trying to blacklist her and ruin her career, not realizing that she was blacklisting herself by suing one of the biggest networks out. Instead of bowing out gracefully, she burned all bridges and any olive branch that she had left. Who would want to work with her after this? Nene, of course, ended up dropping the lawsuit and settled with Bravo for a nice sum of money and the last check she will probably ever see from them again. We witnessed the era of a reality queen. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Oh, my Round me like that. So nasty. And that's what happened. So rude. <laughs> oh, the ghetto. The best to ever do it. Not doubt that there will ever be another Nene Leaks. She's a success story, but she's also a cautionary tale of what happens when you let your ego get bigger than you. She could have went out gracefully and moved on to the next phase of her career, but she went out with a fight and ultimately lost at the end. I still think that Nene is TV gold, and I hope that one day we will see her on another reality show doing her thing because Nene is naturally a likable person with a personality made for TV. When she left RHOA, a lot of people stopped watching because they mainly watched for her. That says it all right there. Which Nene era is your favorite? Like this video if you like season one Nene better and leave a comment if you love Nene's rich bitch era. Do you think Nene will make a comeback? Let's talk about it in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to Gossip Snob.